Hey guys, so this is a response video to Steven Anderson. If you don't know who Steven Anderson is, he is the founder of a church about ten and a half years ago. He does speeches against evolution, he does speeches against the Big Bang Theory, he speaks out against homosexuals. So I came across one of his videos the other day and I just decided to do a response video. Hope you guys enjoy. Hey, don't put your kid in the heathen government school. Homeschool your kid. Don't let them be taught by a bunch of atheists and people who literally hate the Lord. We don't hate God. We simply just don't believe in God. We are indifferent. Science is indifferent on God. The simple truth is that there hasn't been enough evidence that came up to suggest to us that there is any form of God out there. See, in science, there's this thing called the burden of proof. If you make a positive claim, you have to back it up with evidence. It's not our job to disprove you. If you cannot provide the evidence, we will simply dismiss your claim. Similarly, if I claim that there is an invisible unicorn in my room, why would you believe me unless I show proper evidence that such a being exists? We are only dismissing your claim of God because there hasn't been enough evidence. How does that translate to us hating God? Say, well, I have a Christian teacher. You know what? The, the vast majority of teachers down there are not saved. That's the true story. And even if the teacher is saved, all of the curriculum and the whole system is being run and mandated by people who are anti-God. They're not just neutral about God, they're actually anti-God. Again, we don't hate God. We, uh, we just hate you. They actually have an agenda to teach atheism. Yeah. They literally teach in the science class that the whole world created itself from nothing, yeah. which is stupidity and foolishness. Yeah. But this is the kind of folly that comes out of the mouth of a fool. Yeah. Only a stupid person would say, oh, the whole world just created itself from nothing. And if you don't believe it, you're uneducated. I mean, how ridiculous is it to think, oh, see everything that you see here? The whole universe? Guess what? It all just created itself out of nothing. <sighs> we don't believe that everything came from nothing. Before I get into this, I want to define what the Big Bang is. The Big Bang is simply the expansion of the universe. It didn't just happen 13.8 billion years ago. The Big Bang is still happening now. As long as the universe continues to expand, the Big Bang is occurring. That is the straight definition of the Big Bang. Now, what happened before the Big Bang is still quite a mystery to us scientists. There are two leading ideas. First theory is that the universe came from nothing, but this isn't our regular definition of nothing. It does not mean that there was absolutely nothing there. Instead, what it means is that there simply wasn't matter that existed. Think virtual particles and negative energy. These are all things that could exist without the existence of matter. You can read this up on your own. I'm sure there are plenty of physicists out there that can explain this better than I can. But bottom line is, before the Big Bang, there wasn't nothing. We just like to call it nothing in order to symbolize the state in which matter didn't exist. The second theory is that the universe was always eternal. Before the Big Bang occurred, there was a big contraction. This contraction squeezed our universe in a singularity. During this period of time, everything was so hot and dense that time itself didn't even make sense. Of course, this couldn't have lasted very long and what resulted from it was the Big Bang. So yeah, those are the two hypotheses that we have on before the Big Bang. I personally am a fan of the latter. Anyway, enough of the Big Bang Theory. Let's get back to the video. There's no God! Well, where did this stuff come from? Oh, it exploded. What exploded? Um, I don't know, nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous, but literally, because people have such a desire to just kind of fit in and not question things, they will literally go along with it to the point of, ha, 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 you mean you don't believe in the Big Bang? <laughs> it's like the emperor's new clothes. You remember the fable of the emperor's new clothes? Remember, the emperor is naked, okay? And they tell everybody, oh, he has these new clothes and they're so beautiful and everybody talks about how great they are. And, you know, you can only see them if you're wise, though. And, of course, the guy's nude, but everybody pretends that they see it, even though nobody sees it because it isn't there. This is how uh, education works today in America. It's just everybody's taught, hey, listen, evolution's a fact. The Big Bang's a fact. The earth being billions of years old is a fact. Just deal with it. And nobody wants to question it because then they're going to be seen as ignorant, uneducated. 
How can you say it's a fact that the world came from nothing? The thing is that evolution in the Big Bang Theory actually has hardcore evidence to support them. For the Big Bang Theory, all you have to do is look at the evidence and decide for yourself. Okay, here. For starters, Google the cosmic background radiation, and also the redshift of galaxies due to the Doppler effect. For evolution, I encourage you to go visit a natural history museum, uh, and you're not going to go do it, are you? It defies all the laws of science. No, it doesn't. No law of science that's ever been tested or proven says that things come from nothing all by themselves. I mean, it's, it's nonsense. It's ridiculousness. And they never ask the real questions. They want to talk about evolution all day long, but that only explains how one life form turned into another. Okay, where'd the first life form come from? How did it come to life? Yeah, but evolution doesn't exactly tell us how the first life form came about. That's abiogenesis. The first life form could have came from fairies and dancing elephants for all we care, and evolution would still hold true. And by the way, we have been able to mimic abiogenesis in the lab under controlled conditions. We have formed many of the essential proteins that we need, and also phospholipid bilayers. I encourage you to read up on some of these experiments. Not the Miller-Urey one, although that is a good read, but it's a little bit outdated. See, instead of showing me a picture of an ape slowly turning into a human, you know that famous picture? I want to see a picture of nothing turning into a single-celled organism. That's what I want to see. Uh, uh, yeah, um, I guess I could. Give me a sec, I'll be right on it. Because single-celled organisms are extremely complicated. They're actually not. The first organisms on Earth were especially simple. They get more and more complex as you go down the tree of evolution. If you look at the fossils and the records that we have on them, this is exactly the case. As you move through, the organisms get simpler and simpler as we move back in time. So I want you to show me a diagram of how nothing turns into a single cell, or how about this, how anything turns into a single celled organism. And we could put all of these moronic scientists, we could put the whole science department of ASU and all these science teachers from all over the school system, we could put them all in a laboratory, we could bring them all of the most high-tech instruments in the world, we could bring them every chemical, every element, every possible substance to work with, and say, create something that's alive! And guess what they couldn't do? They couldn't do it. They could not create anything that's alive. Nothing, not even the simplest thing that's alive, they can create nothing. But we're supposed to believe that it just came to life by itself. Yeah, I'm just going to refer you to the experiments. We've been able to create proteins, we've been able to create essential amino acids, we could create phospholipid bilayers. We know a lot about abiogenesis as well. For example, we know that the first information carrier was RNA, not DNA. And then you also have to believe that it slowly evolved to the point where it became actually a human being as smart as we are. Yep, that took a long time. Okay, but if you don't believe it, you're just an idiot, you know, you religious bumpkin. But that's what they think. But professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. You'd have to be an idiot. You say, well, how dare you call it? The Bible says they're a fool. I'm just bringing that into 2015 vernacular. The idiot has said in his heart that there is no God. We don't say for sure that there's no God. If you present us with proper evidence, we will take it into consideration. But you have to write your paper first. And anybody who believes that the world just came from nothing, created itself from nothing, is not a scientist. And it's funny because I had some guy confront me at the park. He confronted the wrong guy. He confronted me about homeschooling. My kids are there, they're playing, and he starts telling me how bad homeschooling is. And I gave him a piece of my mind, and he told me, well, you know, but are you going to teach your kids real science? That's what they mean by real science. Wow. To them, that's like the most important thing. And then you'll tell them, no, I don't believe in that stupid nonsense that the whole world just exploded from nothing. Okay, well, nobody gives a shit what you're thinking. Evidence is evidence. It's ridiculous. The, well, how do you like that smartphone in your pocket? Hmm? <laughs> what about that car you drive? Hmm? That was all invented by the scientists you despise. No, evolutionary biologists did not design my smartphone. But it did help on the medicine you take. 
Lots of drugs are tested on animals first, and if we didn't know how related they are to us, then there would be no testing. And astrophysicists did not design the car that I drive. Those are designed by engineers, okay? Not scientists. Now, there are some scientists that have made legitimate discoveries and things, but guess what they weren't? Evolutionary biologists. Guess what they weren't? Astrophysicists. Because those people are just philosophizing about the origins of the species. Hey, here's the origin right here. Amen. It's called Genesis 1-1. Yeah. Oh, what's that junk you're holding? Oh, that's the Bible.